Hello and welcome. This here is the eFoundation webpage. And what is the eFoundation? As it says here, right there top, uh, they, are, they are building an open source uh, operating system for smartphones, uh, and that's called E with the dashes next to it. So you can see it talks about privacy and, you know, not being tracked. So indeed, the point of this is uh, not to be tracked, basically. And um, if you go to their EOS page here, that gives some more details. So basically, EOS, it's a de-googled um, mobile system. It's based on Linux OS, but it's de-googled because while Linux OS, for example, doesn't come with like pre-installed Google Apps and Google Services, it still has some Google tracking in it uh, because Android and Android has Google's tracking built right into it. And simply taking the ASP Android is a, and making like Linux OS from it isn't going to remove the tracking. It's, it's there. But what EOS does is it takes away the tracking and it completes the trade of it. And um, what's... Uh, Important here is that while they are making an OS, they are also making apps and stuff. So we'll be taking a look at their apps and uh, what come with the actual EOS later. And yeah, it's all open source stuff, by the way. So it's it's all forked off from open source things. Um, so yeah, basics of Google Good Android, uh, and uh, you know it's meant to be private. It's meant to not have any tracking in it, and whatnot. One thing that is interesting is they do have a cloud. Supposedly there's no tracking in it, but there is a cloud. So you can use it or you cannot use it. And I believe you can use your own servers as well. So, you know, use whatever you want. Now, once again, this is the custom key features, get E, you can see how to get it, so you can buy a smartphone with already if you want from them. So now if you go to your smartphones, you have the option here. And so you can see there's things like Galaxy S8 and stuff. But they are a bit expensive. Uh, I mean, yeah, a refurbished S9 Plus costs like what, almost 400, which is quite a bit at this point. Uh, but yeah, basically, they sell these old devices as well. You can get these. They are for they are though fairly expensive. Although the Fairphone seems to be quite normal uh, in terms of the actual pricing, because it's quite expensive as this. But yeah, generally they are a bit expensive. But if you want that pre-installed, you have the option. If you don't, you can use your installers, you know, if you have a device that works with it, you can see it fine here, what it does work on. Uh, so I see it's a lot. Uh, but some Samsung devices, Fairphone devices, and this Gigaset thing that they do work on, and then you can actually download it if you, you know, if it doesn't work in your device, and you're actually more, uh, you know, able to do it. You can see the compatible devices here as well, for this type, so you can see, you know, there's a lot more stuff here than the installer thing. What is to take note of, however, is that it's not all devices. Uh, so, for example, my phone isn't officially supported. However, there is an unofficial build, which I have installed and which we take a look at. So, the official builds here, you can see I have Axe and Red Note 8 Pro. So, they only have for the Red Note 8 and 8T. They don't have for the 8 Pro. But there is an unofficial build for it in the XDA forums that I could find. And I could use that one to install on my phone. So we'll be looking look at that and how that works. But yeah, anyway, that's your smartphones. They also have laptops, I guess. I'm not sure why the heck that is, but let's see. It's like for virtual machines or something. Oh, because I guess it's like, this is like Android X8664 thing, you know, where it's controlling Android on a desktop. But yeah, that's like Pinebook and Otimax, I guess. So yeah, not a lot of stuff that you could run on. But yeah, also the OS is very old here, so that's something. Because you can see the OS version here is like Pi and the Q and so on. My phone also has the unofficial version, but it's actually under Q under 10, so that's something. But yeah, the laptops are really old versions, and I'm not sure why I would want to install the laptop to begin with. Like Android laptops always been like, it's not a laptop OS. In any case, you can have you can install this and uh, Next, we'll take a look at what the actual OS looks like and what it does. So I'll pause now and I'll be back here in a bit. So hello again, it seems we should now be recording on my phone. So here is EOS and what it does. So you can already see that this OS looks a lot like iOS or like MIUI, 
if that's what I want to compare it to. But it's actually iOS. It's the it's the stereo good Android thing that we have been talking about. And if you take a look at it, we can see it also this thing at left. So now you can see your router here, you can see these cards, you can edit this. You can now this menu is a bit sketchy, but you can add widgets, you can see the result of widgets here. Or out -ish. I think these are just like Android widgets of some kind, but in any case you can add these, you know, if you want to add a Cre if you want to add like a analog clock, we can, and then we can go back here and you can see it's there. So you can add widgets like this, then you can, you have your abstractions, you have your widget, and you can, you know, uh, if you want to, you know, search, you can, you can search for, you know, let's say you want to search for maps. You can, you know, it helps the browser, and then you can see how it looks here. But however, you can also, you see, you know, if you start typing in maps here, you can see you can also, uh, the app also kind of shows up here. So we can type that, we can use that. And you can see it actually brings up our location. Though that's, of course, not going to be in the video because I don't have my location shown. <laughs> So I guess, yeah, we can actually just, you know, go and disable our location here. Now, some things about the Maps app uh, is that it's a bit chunky. So now if we go up here, it's it's a bit slow. And uh, it kind of stutters a bit at times. It's a bit slow at loading things in and, uh, well, uh, you get the idea. It's not a particularly fast uh, maps app, and uh, you know that's the really problem I have with it. It's it takes time to do things, and also I don't like I don't like the UI out. Uh, and you can see that things are really loading in at you know speeds that are fast. It's taking its time, and that's one where you can just has you know it's fine, but it's a bit slow. It's not optimal. Now I'll take a look at the browser I mentioned previously. This is based on Chromium. It's based on something called Bromit, which is basically a equal with Chromium, with like Adblock and stuff. It's a fork of that, uh, basically. And we can sort of search engine to, uh, you know, this e-search engine, you can see it becomes this. So now if we, actually, if you do this, let's say you want to close this, then we'll let's go to restart the browser. You can see it has like this. And I've searched something. By the way, this, this search engine is shit. Uh, I'm going to be frank. It's really awful. It's slow. It doesn't actually find all the things very well. It doesn't find my channel, for example. And um, it looks ugly, as you can see. It's just plain awful. You don't want to use the search engine. But they do give you the option of using like Data Go instead. Uh, for example, and now I can go to Go, we can search for my channel again, and it should be able to find it here as third option. So yeah. That's a browser, it's pretty much Chrome, but it's the Google and stuff. So it's Chromium based. Very friendly. It's a rig to use Chromium though. It is, you know. And it is, you know, meant to be legal good entirely, so it's interesting to use the good version of Chromium instead of like Firefox or something, but hey, they did it, and it's legal good. You know, you can also have search option here on home screen, so you can use search here as well by swiping down. It's like iOS, as again, it's mimicking iOS. What is interesting though is this multitasking menu. They are not mimicking iOS, so if you have a browser, you can see there's two apps here like this. It's, it's, it's the old Android style, not the iOS or new Android style, which is very interesting and unexpected given how hard it's been making iOS. Then, you know, you have your messages, very stock, all of this pretty much taken from the OS. So, you know, it's, it feels very stock, you know, very simple. And, um, you know, you have your apps, I believe it's like based on, I think it's like an AP, uh, like, you know, AP Keeper thing or something. It looks, the logo looks like AP Keeper anyway. I think that's why it is. You can download like your apps and you can go to settings. You can only show open source apps if you want to. So now it won't show anything that isn't open source and whatnot. You also have your calculator app, which is once again very stock, very simple, last thing. Calendar, once again fairly stock, seem fairly similar to any HOS, once again forked from that. Alarm, once again stock, once again same thing forked from there. Contacts, same thing. Files, same thing. Gallery, 
same thing. Mail and all these things actually in like EOS account. Or you can do a manual stuff, uh, but you need one scan your email account. So, you know, you need to make your EOS account here. Or use a different email account, you know, use whatever you want. You have your maps, which we have already taken a look at. You have your music, since like a very simple music app, that's nothing too complicated. You have your notes app. Now, this is one really stupid thing. They need to log in with a new account, which basically, you know, you can use a specific server of your own if you want to. Or you can, you know, use your cloud. But you need this account to use notes. Or you can use Ultra Battle again. You need your own server for it. So this is really, really dumb. They need you to have an account or a server for a good time notes app. You don't need that for any realistic scenario. And this is meant to be like a no date stolen thing. Like a private folks thing. So why can't I have my notes locally on my goddamn phone? And you can't look do this emptily. If you do, then it just gives me a web page available. So yeah. It's really, really dumb. This is not something I think that I think should be on an OS like this. And this really does need changing. You know, if I have no I don't need my notes in the cloud. I don't need my notes or an account, I don't need them on a server, I need them on my phone, that's it. So give me the option to not have to use a server. It can't be that difficult to do. And this is just really, really dumb. I don't know why it's like this, it shouldn't be. They have recorder. Very simple, we can record our screen. I'm using a different recorder because I don't know how this one works. Uh, but yeah, you can record your screen or sound. I think it's pretty much... Uh, yeah, you have the option of doing that as well. Then you have settings, very simple, once again Android, and then you have your tasks list, which does work without an account, uh, which is good. And then I have used a series screen recorder because that's what I use. Not all apps, yeah, it's very minimal. Now this is an unofficial build, so you don't have OT updates, so no, this is the option here, but it has to work. Uh, you can't update uh, through OTA. You also... High networks, so very simple, you can get your Wi-Fi, you can get your data, blah, blah, blah. I don't have a SIM in this, so there's no data here. You can do your Bluetooth. Do I even have Bluetooth on? I do. I can disable it as well. You have your apps. You can see, you can do all of these things. How this called the Blisa launcher is what they're using. You can see all the apps here, what they're using. Then you can, you know, do that. Then you, then you have your battery. You can see your battery things. You have your display things, sound settings, very simple storage. Not a lot of money is taken up here, uh, but in any case, you can have your privacy settings. So you can actually manage your things and whatnot. Location, you can control that. Magic Earth is the maps. You can change your security, and you can see your fingerprint. I haven't, but you can. You can look at your Accounts, open keychain, do we have an account here? We do, I guess, but uh, I think it's like a local thing. You have your accessibility. Very usual Android stuff, you know. Now we don't have, if you go to here and go to gestures, we don't have gesture navigation, so you have to use this old type navigation. For some reason, once again, they like some features, as you can see from that. You only have, you do have your button settings, though you can, you know, Choose what to do with your actual buttons and what you know you can set your advanced power menus, you can add the options to that. And uh, why not? You can go to your micro G, which you have here, so you can use micro G on things and uh, why not? So you can you know use your Google services to some degree if you need to. And then you have about phone, which info about the phone. Very simple, so yeah. It's fine overall, it's not a bad OS, I think I probably would use this if I was still using a smartphone. I don't really use my smartphone, I use uh, a dumb phone. So, <laughs> yeah, but it's a very good, uh, it's very good for, you know, or it's not, not very good, but it's surprisingly good for why it is and why it does. Uh, you know, one of these Digo Good Android OSs, um, it works very well, it has, you know, all the functions. It misses some, you know, like, I I don't understand why the notes app is the way it is. It's really dumb, you know, they're... I wish there was just your navigation because I prefer that, you know. But it's fine. It, it It's even this unofficial build that works fine. There isn't a lot of bugs or anything, you know. it's It seems to be working just fine. There's no major issues. You can get your apps from here. And I know APKs are fine. You can change stones all open source if you want, you know. Or you can have it not do that, you know, you can do your updates there as well. You can, of course, you know, do whatever. You can't remove these apps, which is just really dumb. 
but you know, except for the one I installed, which can do it once again, the iOS style. But yeah, that's that. It's uh, I like it. It's a good thing. You know, it it's good to exist. If you if you know are interested, if you're like a privacy folks person and you want to know what to install on your smartphone, take a look at EOS. It's a great option, and it means you're not getting Google tracked at all. And uh, just getting something without Google services isn't going to prevent Google tracking. It's still going to be there. So you know, if you want something without it, get EOS. It's a you know, it's it's actually the Google this time around. I think it's supposed to be, unless you're totally lying, which I don't think they are. So they seem uh, valid enough, and you know, they seem to have you know what they're talking about, and they're open source as well. So you can always look through their code and see if it's actually Google or not. But they are getting rid of the Google stuff, you know, they're using their own navigation service, their own GPS thing, they're using their own everything. So yeah, a very cool OS, very nice and everything to work with. It is, I don't love the UI, but you can always get your own launcher for it, so no problems there. And it's fine. It has the features you might need. And also the hiding of the button panel is a bit chunky, as you can see here. But yeah, it's a very good OS overall. It's re I'm really impressed at why this. There are some really dumb things with it, as I mentioned in OTAP in specific, it's really dumb. Uh, but besides that, it's pretty damn good, and I frankly recommend this to anybody if your device supports it, because it is a really cool thing to exist, and it really does allow you to avoid that tracking by Google that the otherwise get, and uh, that's really really cool. And you won't have to go with like a Linux phone because you know. You have actually have Android, so you can actually run your Android apps, but you still don't get tracked like you would an Android. And that's what makes it really cool. It's a good way to avoid Google whilst using Android. 